Hello, everyone, and uh, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on where we are. Uh, thank you all for joining and uh, for listening to this talk. Today, we have the pleasure of having with us Pro Professor Roberta Rabellotti from the University of Pavia. She's an economist, and her work focuses on development and regional economics, innovation in developing countries, clusters and small enterprises, but also multinationals and global value chains. She worked with Orchestra, uh, but also with the Inter-American Development Bank, the European Commission, the OECD, ILO, and various UN agencies. I know her mostly for uh, her amazing articles on uh, Chinese internationalization, internationalization strategies and on the impact and, de and determinants of Chinese outward foreign direct investments. Uh, she's also conducted several studies on Chinese and Indian mergers and acquisitions in Europe and on Chinese investments in Italy, our home country. Today, she's going to talk about one of her latest articles that was published in the Journal of Industrial and, Co and Corporate Change that introduces the notion of green window of opportunity, which is basically a framework for paradigm shifts towards sustainability and higher renewable energy adoption, especially in, in emerging countries. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Professor Rabellotti and Roberta, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you? Yeah, perfect. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Angela. Thank you for this uh, uh, invitation. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me uh, to be able to share with you my uh, research on uh, green windows of opportunity. So I will uh, try to uh, share my screen and see if you can uh, see it. Okay. Uh, just a second. Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah, okay, perfect. great. Okay, fine. So, um, yes, thank you so much for this uh, uh, invitation. Um, the um, topic I'm going to talk uh, today, is, uh, today is Green Windows of Opportunity, Latecomer Development in the Age of Transformation uh, Towards Sustainability. Uh, this is a research work uh, which, as uh, Angela was said, was published in Industrial Corporate Chain and is co-authored uh, with two colleagues, uh, Sholan Fu uh, at the University of Oxford and Rasmus Lima at the the, um, at Uno Merit in uh, uh, Maastricht. Um, okay, so um, let me start from uh, um, uh, presenting you some background information uh, which is uh, um, motivating uh, uh, our uh, study. Um, I mean, the first uh, uh, point I would like to make, to make uh, is, uh, I think, uh, uh, shared uh, and agreed by everybody um, and is related uh, with uh, the importance of the green uh, transformation at the global level and uh, uh, the fact that uh, uh, recently uh, the trend towards uh, um, the green transformation has been uh, accelerating. Um, the second point uh, is about uh, the, um, the fact that uh, this green transformation is uh, definitely a, and it will uh, um, definitely uh, require a major uh, techno-economic uh, paradigm uh, shift. Um, and uh, the first one is that uh, the, uh, the green transformation is probably uh, the first uh, industrial revolution uh, with a deadline. Um, and uh, uh, also uh, is uh, characterized by the fact of being uh, uh, steered by public policy and by by have uh, a clear uh, um, a social value. So, uh, in relation to these uh, uh, different stylized uh, uh, facts, uh, um, I think a number of uh, um, important questions uh, are uh, arising, in particular with reference to uh, latecomer countries, uh, because uh, it is still quite uh, uncertain uh, um, uh, what uh, this green transformation. Uh, uh, is going to imply uh, for latecomer development. It's not yet clear uh, if uh, the green transformation would uh, increase uh, power entry barriers for uh, uh, latecomer development or rather 
it could uh, open uh, uh, windows of opportunity. And it's about these windows of opportunity which I'm going to uh, um, I'm going to talk uh, uh, today. So these are the the, the three research questions we have uh, addressed. Uh, um, sorry. Oh, no, sorry, I was just looking at the chat. It was, it was something for me. Uh, sorry for interrupting. Uh, so three research questions um, uh, which uh, um, we have addressed with our uh, uh, um, uh, research. Uh, the first one is uh, um, about uh, um, the, uh, op uh, the opportunities opening up uh, for uh, uh, new uh, latecomer countries uh, um, uh, following uh, the uh, acceleration of this green transformation. Uh, secondly, um, uh, we investigate uh, the conditions and the dynamics of uh, uh, green latecomer development. And thirdly, uh, we, um, uh, we uh, are we develop a new conceptual framework to understand the determinant of uh, uh, green uh, latecomer uh, development. So what uh, we, um, and the, from the empirical point of view, uh, the empirical uh, base for addressing these uh, research uh, questions is uh, a focus on China, and uh, uh, in particular focused on a number of uh, uh, renewable energy uh, industries. Um, you can see uh, the list of these uh, uh, industries uh, in the slide. Uh, so we focus on uh, biomass, uh, concentrated solar power, hydropower, solar PV, and wind uh, power. And uh, um, we have collected a number of case studies, uh, which have been all published uh, in a special issue um, in uh, uh, industrial corporate change. And these are uh, um, in, in qualitative case uh, uh, studies on the different uh, industries, industries uh, but there are also uh, some quantitative analysis, uh, mainly based on patent and uh, on uh, uh, simulation uh, uh, models. Um, so uh, let me start from uh, um, the reason why we do introduce a new uh, framework. Um, the need for a new framework uh, can be justified um, on the basis uh, of uh, the fact that uh, uh, of course, uh, um, there exist uh, other frameworks uh, um, uh, tailored to the analysis of uh, the green transformation, uh, but most uh, of these uh, frameworks, uh, um, they are not really uh, situating uh, the discussion in the context of latecomer development. And on the other side, uh, of course, uh, there are also frameworks uh, uh, for uh, the analysis of the latecomer development, but in most of the cases, uh, uh, they do not include um, any specificity on uh, the green economy. And in particular, uh, um, they don't take on uh, the transformation agenda. And what we think is that uh, um, it is very important uh, in terms of uh, uh, catching up uh, in uh, um, in industries uh, uh, related uh, with the green transformation, uh, that latecomer development uh, will not uh, follow um, established pathways. So they will, uh, from the outset, uh, develop uh, differently uh, from uh, uh, what uh, has been done by uh, advanced countries. So they should uh, um, uh, they should avoid and they should stop. Uh, to um, be inspired by uh, a growth model, which can be uh, summarized uh, in the sentence, uh, grow first uh, and clean up uh, uh, later. So um, let me start uh, with uh, introducing you this uh, uh, Green Windows uh, um, of Opportunities framework, which is made by three main uh, pillars. Um, so Green Windows of Opportunity, which I will uh, explain uh, you in a uh, uh, few uh, moments, uh, what do I mean for that? Uh, a second pillar is the role of uh, the sectoral system of production and innovation. And the third uh, 
important role are the catch, uh, pillar are the catch up uh, trajectories uh, resulting uh, from the interaction of green windows of opportunity uh, with uh, uh, the um, sectoral system and with uh, uh, the uh, stakeholder action. So what I'm going to do now is to discuss uh, these three pillars uh, one by one, also providing uh, uh, some empirical evidence uh, uh, referring uh, to uh, China and in particular to the uh, industries uh, I have uh, um, indicated uh, uh, before as uh, the industries on which we have uh, focused uh, our uh, um, attention uh, in this study. So let me start with uh, green windows of opportunity. Um, the uh, peculiarities of green windows of opportunities are that uh, they are mainly endogenous. Uh, so uh, this uh, implies uh, that uh, green windows of opportunity can be created uh, by government and uh, they are influenced by domestic and global environmental and industrial policies. And this is clearly something uh, which has uh, uh, happened in the case of China, as I'm going to uh, show you um, in a moment with some example. Uh, what I would like to uh, emphasize uh, is that uh, uh, this uh, endogeneity of the windows of opportunity is not uh, common uh, in the sense that uh, there are a lot of uh, um, uh, studies uh, uh, about the catch-up uh, uh, processes uh, involving uh, China or other countries such as, for instance, South Korea um, on uh, industries uh, um, as different as, uh, for instance, high-tech industry as uh, mobile phones or uh, even traditional industry as steel production. And in all uh, these industries, the windows of opportunity have been predominantly exogenous uh, because they have been predominantly uh, created by external technological or market uh, changes. While in the case of green windows of opportunity, as I was saying, uh, they are uh, mainly institutional or policy uh, windows uh, exogen endogenously uh, created. So example for China uh, could be uh, the first uh, very important uh, um, law uh, which was uh, uh, introduced in 2006, uh, the Renewable Energy uh, Promotion Law. Um, and uh, this uh, law um, has been uh, a key starting point uh, for uh, industries such as uh, biomass, uh, such as uh, uh, solar, uh, um, PV, such as uh, uh, wind power. So this law has been uh, <clears throat> really key in terms of uh, uh, building up incentives uh, um, in China for uh, uh, creating a domestic market uh, for this uh, uh, industry. And then uh, there are a number of other uh, uh, programs, um, and I just would like to mention two of them, which are very well known the Golden Sun Demonstration Program, which has been very important in terms of uh, uh, promoting uh, the diffusion of solar panel um, in uh, uh, China, uh, and as well as the Rise the Wind Program, which has been key in terms of promoting uh, uh, the wind uh, uh, industry development. And of course, uh, as you know, uh, I'm sure uh, much better than myself, uh, apart from these very um, well-known uh, national programs uh, in China, there are a lot of uh, uh, regional uh, or maybe uh, better to say uh, program um, at province uh, level, um, which have been also very important uh, to the promotion of this industry uh, locally. So, uh, but green windows of opportunity are uh, uh, key in terms of uh, opening up uh, um, uh, uh, opportunities for the development of this industry, but they are not uh, uh, enough because uh, uh, the exploitation of these green windows of opportunity uh, depend uh, on uh, um, the uh, development of uh, um, sectoral systems and in, more in particular depend on the existing uh, uh, preconditions and uh, on the responses uh, of uh, firms uh, and other public and private actors 
which are needed in order to take uh, it, uh, to take advantage of the existing uh, uh, green windows of opportunity. Something that we emphasize uh, and we empirically show in our study is that uh, these uh, um, uh, sect the sectoral systems uh, um, are very much, and, and the kind of responses within the sectoral systems are very much uh, influenced and, and change very much depending on the technological maturity and the tradability of the, green, of the different green technology. Because uh, the green technologies we have uh, investigated uh, are very different in terms of their maturity. Uh, for instance, we can say that hydropower or solar PV are quite uh, uh, stable technologies, while, for instance, uh, concentrated solar power is still a nascent uh, uh, in uh, technology, still very immature. So these different maturity uh, explain uh, um, and, and characterize uh, the different uh, type of responses uh, we can find uh, in, uh, uh, in this industry. And tradability is, of, of course, also important because uh, uh, if uh, a solar panel uh, is very easily uh, tradable, uh, a, a wind turbine uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, um, is not so uh, easily tradable. So this is, of course, also influencing uh, the way in which these industries have been uh, develop, uh, developing um, in uh, uh, China. So let me um, make uh, uh, some example from China about this uh, um, about these active uh, responses um, we have uh, um, documented in our uh, uh, sectoral case studies. Um, as I was saying, the uh, maturity of the industry is very important. And what we have found is that when we are <clears throat> dealing with industry which tend to be quite mature, such as the bio, such as biomass and solar. What China has uh, uh, done is uh, uh, to acquire, uh, uh, first of all, to acquire world class uh, technology, uh, and then uh, building on this uh, uh, technology to um, uh, build up uh, a domestic uh, uh, innovation and production capability. Key have been also uh, the acquisition of the uh, um, mainly European companies. Uh, this has been, for instance, very important in the biomass industry, which has been a way to acquire uh, technology and to uh, access uh, uh, specialized uh, human capital. In uh, uh, sectors such as uh, hydro uh, energy and uh, CSP, uh, China has invested uh, in uh, um, very um, uh, large public R&D uh, program. And this, for instance, in the case of hydro, has been uh, key in terms of uh, building up a um, uh, scientific and innovation capacity also in Chinese uh, uh, universities. And China, uh, for instance, has become the top uh, um, uh, country in terms of patenting in green hydro energy, thanks to this uh, investment uh, in uh, uh, public R&D. And of course, uh, in uh, innovation system uh, is also very important uh, to uh, take into account uh, the interactions uh, among, uh, um, among uh, the different actors. And uh, the case of the solar PV uh, innovation system is quite interesting from the Chinese uh, so, um, innovation system in solar PV is quite interesting because uh, it is characterized by very intensive uh, interaction among uh, the different uh, uh, actors uh, operating uh, in the system. So let me come now to the uh, catch up uh, uh, trajectories. As you can see in this uh, um, graph, we distinguish between market catch up uh, on the uh, vertical axis and uh, um, uh, technological catch up on the uh, uh, horizontal axis. And uh, uh, in terms of uh, market catch up, uh, we distinguish between uh, domestic market, uh, which of course uh, in the case of China is quite uh, uh, significant, uh, and global market. And in the case of uh, uh, technological catch up, uh, we distinguish between uh, new to the country technology and uh, world 
world-class technology. So reaching uh, the, uh, the, uh, te the global technological frontier. And the, as you can see uh, from, uh, we have the, uh, depicted uh, the different trajectory uh, for the different uh, industry. They are quite different. Uh, and I, I'm going in a moment to explain you these differences. Uh, but what I would like to uh, mention uh, um, now is that uh, as you can see, almost all the industry we have been uh, uh, investigated have reached uh, the top uh, right quadrant, which is the quadrant of uh, global market catch up and uh, um, world class uh, technology. So the only industry which according to us has not reached uh, the, um, uh, the, has not catch up uh, so far is the wind industry. And then now I'm going to go through uh, different type of trajectories. So first trajectory I would like to uh, present you is the trajectory which was undertaken by biomass and uh, uh, hydropower, which is quite similar, um, which we can be um, identify as uh, from domestic imitation to global leadership. So these two technologies are stable technologies. Uh, um, and what China uh, has done was uh, uh, initially to rely on uh, uh, technological transfer, uh, uh, mainly from uh, uh, Europe. And then uh, with huge investment, uh, um, public investment, uh, and uh, but also the involvement of private firms um, has built a, a domestic technological capability at the uh, frontier. Very different is the story of the solar PV, uh, which is also a quite mature uh, technology. Uh, but in the case of solar PV, which as you can see in, in, in the figure has a very strange uh, um, uh, uh, trajectory, uh, this is because uh, basically um, the uh, solar PV started to develop in China um, uh, basically on, based on production capacity uh, for the international market. Um, in the first, uh, uh, in the first um, half of the 2000, the uh, European market for solar panel was expanding with a lot of uh, public uh, subsidies and China started to produce solar panel with uh, um, imported technology for the European market. But then the uh, global market collapsed uh, and with, this was uh, after the financial crisis. And so what China did was to um, basically substitute the international demand with domestic demand. So creating uh, with uh, incentive a uh, domestic uh, market. And at the same time, um, it also, uh, there was also a huge investment in terms of building up uh, domestic technological capacity and also in terms of uh, um, building up domestic capacity in the whole uh, solar value chain. So also entering in some steps of the value chain in which China uh, was not uh, before. So what, uh, um, uh, what happened was basically that uh, China uh, was able uh, to catch up, uh, to become again uh, um, uh, dominant in the global market. Uh, you should remember that China nowadays uh, is producing about three quarter of the um, total uh, uh, solar panel uh, uh, sold in the international market, but it is also at the uh, technological, uh, China is also at the technological frontier in this industry. Um, a very different story again is uh, um, the story of concentrated solar power, because uh, among all the industry we have uh, studied uh, this uh, is a very um, immature, a very a new industry. Uh, so is an industry in which China has uh, invested uh, since the beginning uh, a lot uh, in uh, uh, research um, with uh, significant uh, public and private investment uh, in domestic uh, demonstration program process. Uh, uh, projects, sorry. And so what is uh, mm, the situation in this uh, industry is that China 
is definitely at the technological uh, uh, frontier, uh, but uh, the market in this case uh, is still quite uh, unsure in the sense that the market is growing, but very, very slowly. Uh, China is, uh, um, of course, dominating the domestic market and uh, is starting also to export uh, uh, some technology abroad, but the market for this technology is still uh, uh, quite uh, uh, limited. And the final uh, uh, trajectories I would like to uh, present you is the trajectory of uh, uh, wind uh, uh, power. Um, as I was saying uh, um, before, wind uh, is the only industry in which uh, we believe uh, China has not yet reached the uh, uh, technological, but also the global market uh, frontier. And this uh, has been, uh, uh, this could be explained by the fact that uh, the wind uh, um, technology uh, is quite complex and uh, has been evolving uh, quite rapidly. So uh, for instance, uh, wind uh, um, was uh, uh, before mainly, uh, 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 we, I mean, onshore, wind uh, uh, plants uh, and then uh, it moved to offshore uh, wind plants and nowadays uh, uh, there is an increasing role of digital technologies and the hybrid digital technology so china so far has not yet been able to uh, reach the technological frontier and uh, um, the, uh, the it's still characterized by a technology uh, gap with uh, uh, the countries at the frontier in this technology. And uh, it's of course dominating uh, the domestic market. And we should say that, that the Chinese domestic market is the largest market in the world for wind at the moment, but is not yet, uh, I mean, the, the Chinese present, presence in the global market is still um, rather uh, limited. So let me <clears throat> uh, uh, summarize uh, some of the key uh, uh, takeaways. Um, the, uh, uh, a common finding uh, uh, across all the industries we have studied um, is uh, that green uh, uh, windows of opportunity uh, have been opened by institutional policy changes. We have also, um, uh, we have also found that uh, there is uh, significant uh, variability in catch-up trajectories uh, at the sectoral uh, uh, level. Um, and uh, um, we have also uh, uh, find, found out that uh, uh, sectoral characteristic and in particular technological maturity um, are key in terms of explaining uh, this uh, uh, variability in the uh, trajectories. Uh, with regard to China, um, in general, in all these uh, uh, sectors, China uh, took uh, very active measures uh, to enhance technological capabilities and uh, um, to build up open and strategic national and sectoral innovation system uh, through trade and investment policies and with a key role in terms of the internationalization of R&D. And uh, uh, the result has been achieving fast catch up and in some of these uh, uh, cases, even uh, leadership, both uh, in terms of market and in terms of uh, uh, technology. Um, I would like also uh, to mention a possible uh, um, side effect, uh, quite important of the emergence of China and potentially of other latecomer countries in renewable ed energies. Because uh, uh, this can have uh, an internationally beneficial effect um, in terms of reducing uh, the price of these technologies and uh, mobilizing finance and technologies uh, for a more affordable green energy system, um, which can be diffused in uh, uh, the global uh, uh, south. Uh, this, of course, uh, is quite important in terms of uh, uh, what I was saying before uh, about this, uh, the importance of changing uh, the um, attitude 
of uh, uh, developing and latecomer countries uh, in terms of uh, the green transition and abandon and the importance to abandon a model of growth based on the idea of growth first and clean up uh, later. So before concluding, um, I would like to uh, dedicate uh, uh, just a few slides uh, to present you some more recent work I've been uh, doing uh, in collaboration with Rasmus Le Le uh, Lema and on behalf of ANCAD, um, on, which is a kind of follow-up of this uh, uh, study on green windows of opportunity, which, uh, as you have seen, uh, have been so far uh, very much focused on uh, China. Uh, so what we are doing uh, for ANCAD um, which has decided to uh, dedicate uh, on green windows of opportunity the next uh, uh, technology and innovation report uh, is to, um, uh, uh, to validate the framework uh, we have used uh, to understand uh, uh, um, the, uh, the, the, the trajectories, uh, the, the catch-up trajectories uh, in the case of China to new countries, uh, so extending our analysis uh, um, to uh, uh, new uh, countries uh, at different level of uh, development and uh, to new technologies, uh, introducing uh, uh, new te technologies such as uh, green hydrogen and also extending to uh, EV electric, electric, electric uh, vehicles. Um, we are also uh, exploring uh, um, the <clears throat> emergence of green opportunity windows uh, um, arising uh, with the greening of global value chains in latecomer countries. And finally, we are uh, um, investigating the relevance of the new digital technologies for the exploitation of green windows of opportunities uh, in latecomer countries. So moving uh, to a, 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 a more differentiated evidence, and so including uh, uh, countries of very different level of development, uh, what we have uh, uh, found is that uh, the, um, in particular with regard to the uh, innovation system and the two elements of the innovation system, which are preconditions to take advantage of the opportunity and strategic responses of public and private actors to size uh, green windows of opportunity, uh, the, um, the, uh, the situation is much more varied, is much more differentiated uh, with respect to what we have uh, uh, found uh, in the uh, Chinese uh, uh, case. Uh, in fact, we have uh, find, uh, we have found that, uh, for instance, uh, there are countries uh, with uh, uh, sufficient uh, uh, preconditions, uh, but in which uh, a strategic response uh, tend to be very weak. Uh, or uh, we have found countries uh, uh, with uh, uh, very uh, strong and powerful uh, responses, but uh, uh, starting uh, from very weak, uh, um, a very weak uh, pre-existing supply base. Uh, in uh, um, the industries uh, um, we uh, have been uh, studied. So what we have found is to try to uh, uh, identify uh, four scenarios, uh, um, uh, four possible scenarios, and to assign uh, to these different scenarios uh, uh, different uh, um, uh, cases uh, in terms of industry and in terms of countries uh, about which uh, we have found uh, empirical evidence uh, in uh, the literature. Um, and uh, as you can see in this table, uh, so there is the ideal uh, scenario uh, in which preconditions are strong and uh, responses are strong. And I would say that uh, most of the cases uh, I have uh, um, so far described uh, about China uh, could be um, situated in this uh, uh, scenario, maybe uh, all the cases apart from uh, uh, the case of wind. Uh, then uh, um, uh, there is a second scenario in which uh, there are strong precondition, but responses uh, are not very strong. Um, and uh, this is, for instance, uh, uh, the case of uh, um, uh, solar PV in, uh, in, uh, in India. Um, India is a country with a very uh, solid uh, 
uh, domestic uh, manufacturing capability. Um, uh, India has uh, um, created a domestic uh, demand uh, for uh, solar PV, uh, but uh, the, um, uh, the uh, responses uh, have been quite uh, uh, Week and at the end, uh, for the moment, uh, this seems to be a miss opportunity in the sense that uh, uh, India has created a, a huge domestic market uh, mainly for uh, uh, imported technology without really being able to develop a uh, domestic uh, uh, production and innovation capability in this uh, industry. Another case uh, uh, could be. Uh, and it's interesting because it could be compared uh, um, with China, uh, is the uh, CSP, con Concentrated Solar Power. In this case, uh, uh, for instance, uh, as we have seen, China has been uh, very good in terms of sizing uh, the green windows of opportunity with a lot of investment uh, in demonstration project. Uh, this has not happened in Morocco, uh, where uh, 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 there are uh, uh, relatively good preconditions and where uh, uh, there were a lot of uh, uh, investment in uh, uh, international project, uh, but uh, this has not been enough uh, to really um, develop so far a very uh, efficient uh, uh, local uh, uh, innovation capacity, domestic uh, production and innovation capacity. Then uh, uh, there is a scenario three, uh, which is uh, um, a case uh, with uh, weak precondition but quite active approach. This is, for instance, the case uh, in biomass, uh, both in Thailand and in uh, uh, Vietnam, uh, which are quite uh, um, uh, competitive in this uh, industry. Um, and uh, um, finally, uh, the, the fourth scenario uh, in which uh, um, for the moment uh, we don't see uh, very much, uh, a lot of catch up. Uh, and uh, this is the case uh, in which uh, we have both uh, weak precondition and uh, uh, weak uh, um, uh, strategies. So this is just uh, um, a few insights uh, from a very um, comprehensive uh, uh, study um, we have, uh, um, which is still a work in progress, uh, which uh, has been able to put uh, together a lot of empirical evidence on uh, um, very, uh, on many very different countries and several uh, different uh, uh, industries. Uh, and to conclude, I uh, uh, would like to, um, to present uh, um, uh, some policy implications. Um, the first uh, important policy implication, which goes uh, uh, across uh, all uh, industry, is the um, importance for policymaker to co-design uh, policies in uh, what are normally uh, considered as distinct, uh, policy, distinct uh, policy domains. So um, in, uh, in order to take advantage of uh, uh, green windows of opportunity, it is important to coordinate environmental and energy policy as well as industrial and innovation policy. Uh, something which is also coming out uh, uh, from all the empirical evidence we have collected is the need to um, uh, develop uh, sector-specific uh, uh, approaches uh, and sequence of, uh, uh, of the different uh, uh, interventions. And finally, um, something uh, which I think is very important uh, um, and, and must be emphasized is uh, uh, the fact that uh, international organization and national government um, have a very important role uh, for in sustaining institutional change uh, led mission oriented uh, green windows of opportunity because uh, this uh, can uh, this, be the development the opening of this uh, 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 mission-oriented green windows of opportunity uh, have uh, an important uh, uh, role in terms of facilitating uh, the entry in the global market of new champions, 
uh, in the green economy and uh, have uh, also a key role in terms of expanding the diversity of green uh, pathways. And I think this is key in terms of really accelerating uh, uh, the green transformation uh, globally. So I think uh, I will uh, stop here. I will stop also sharing my screen. And uh, uh, I thank you very much, uh, um, everybody, for your uh, attention.